just about a week or two ago, Trisha Paytas made a video about me, which a lot of people asked me to respond to. And while in this video, I'm not gonna be really doing a direct response to that video, I do wanna address a really big issue, which is Trisha Paytas consistently playing the victim. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is take a look at what's going on in the YouTube community and try to see what lessons we can learn from them. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And if you're not yet, make sure you follow me on social media at The Rewired Soul on Instagram and Twitter. So yeah, I was sitting back, I was watching the premiere of the new Spill video where um, they were talking about the situation between Trisha Paytas and Nick Akato Avocado. It's part one, but anyways, I'll link it down in the description. Go check it out. Like Spill is the best tea channel out there, all right? Like just so much research and information. And sometimes I'm like, what new thing are you gonna add to this conversation, right? And she always does, flawless, mwah. But anyways, as I watched it, I started to recognize a pattern of behavior. And this pattern of behavior is calling people a stalker and trying to push that narrative whenever she doesn't like somebody, all right? And I saw this, I saw this happen. In the Spill video, she brought up instances of Trisha Paytas doing this to Nina Unrated, to Daniel E. Carroll, to Nikocado Avocado, and I bet you didn't know this, she even labeled me as a stalker. Oh my God. It's, it's kind of just like to the point of almost like borderline harassment, just like constantly coming for us. It's like, if it's not harassment, it's very stalkerish behavior. It's scary. It's like, it's scary. Now, what we're seeing, aside from this pattern of behavior of calling people she doesn't like a stalker, is she is consistently playing the victim. And here's one of the issues that Trisha Paytas has, as well as many other public figures and YouTube creators as a whole have, is they want everything both ways. And here's what I mean by that. They want to be able to be in the public spotlight, get all of the fame, the admiration, the money that comes along with it, but they don't wanna be talked about in any kind of negative light. And you can't have that. You can't have it both ways, all right? And something that I've been thinking about quite a bit lately, and it goes back to some of the controversy I had a couple months ago is, where's this line? Where's this line where people mind who you talk about and if it hurts their feelings or not, right? Like Trisha Paytas, although we could say she is a YouTuber, she is being talked about in mainstream media, all right? So just the other day, I saw that E! News tweeted out about her, all right? Not only that, but Trisha Paytas just tweeted out before I made this video that she has a big announcement coming that's going to be announced on E! All right? So she is kind of in the mainstream, but she also happens to be a YouTuber, so she sees videos like mine. Now, are we not allowed to talk about her because some things we say might hurt her feelings? I don't really think that's right. I really don't think that's fair. Like, what if no journalist could talk about anybody in a negative way if it were to hurt their feelings? You see what I mean? Like, that's not how this works. If something is being put out there in the public, we have the right to discuss it, to analyze it, say whatever the heck we want about it, all right? It is purely based on our opinions as well as the evidence that is presented through recorded videos. One of the other things that really, really bother, bothers me about the whole playing the victim idea is the trolling, right? Like Trisha Paytas will be labeled as a troll. She will say she is a troll. She says she makes trolling videos. And this comes up quite a bit. I've had people leave me comments on like this and like, oh no, she's just trolling. She's just trolling. And like, here's the thing. That is like the perfect disguise. That is the perfect thing to do, right? And like, obviously, like this, this video right here, like if you haven't watched it yet, it's Trisha Paytas smashing her face into a pizza. Quite interesting. But anyways, this is like the perfect alibi because whenever she does something like this, she doesn't have to take any accountability, any responsibility for that because she can easily sweep it on the rug and just say, hey, I was just trolling, bro. That's all it was. You see what I mean? And like, that is what she's doing to protect herself from criticism. 
So speaking of criticisms, one of the main criticisms I got was people said that I diagnosed Trisha Paytas with borderline personality disorder. First off, I can't diagnose anybody. But second off, when discussing this, I used a clip of her saying she has borderline personality disorder. Now after all of this, the most controversial part was when Trisha came out and basically said that the Rewild Soul lied about her having borderline personality disorder. And I'm uh, I'm just gonna roll a clip from Chris's channel now. We do put our lies out there, but to diagnose someone, he puts in the description like Trisha has borderline personality disorder. I don't, it's, it's messed up, it is, it's gross. It's honestly so disgusting. Uh. But I do wanna say this. Trisha, there was absolutely something that you were wrong about in your video, which is that I never, ever, ever speculate about a person's diagnosis. Y'all, 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 if, if you're in a good mood, you're gonna love it. <laughs> Isn't that the fun part, though, about dating someone with, like, borderline personality? Like, you don't know what mood they're gonna be in. Are they gonna be happy? Are they gonna be mad? You're always in a good mood, unless I... Now, to be honest, in this specific situation, I don't actually believe that the Rewild Soul is exactly speculating, because as you've seen, he has provided actual clips and evidence to suggest that Trisha Paytas might possibly have borderline personality disorder. Now, when I released that, I had quite a few Trisha Paytas fans come in at me and say, Oh no, she doesn't really have borderline personality disorder. She was just trolling about that. Even though many other creators have made videos showing the multiple times where she admitted to being diagnosed with borderline personality disorder. And in recent videos, she has also said she's never been diagnosed with anything. So we have to ask ourselves, which one is it? And here's the thing, when it comes to trolling, it's one of it's one of two ways, right? You're either trolling and it doesn't matter because this was an act, this was a show, none of it is real. So people can say whatever they want to about it because it was a fake, fictional, made up video. But then on the other hand, if it is real, right? then you're not trolling. So which one is it? Because you can't get upset if it's about a fake video that you did. So I hope you see what I mean, where she's using this, this trolling facade to cover up anything she wants whenever she wants. And it bums me out. So those of you who haven't been paying attention, I keep getting comments like, I thought you weren't gonna talk about Trisha Paytas anymore. I thought you weren't gonna talk about Trisha Paytas anymore. So let me address that real quick. When the controversy with me first kicked off, all right, a lot of it centered around Trisha Paytas and my stupid DM that I sent to the drama channels about Trisha Paytas. It kicked off, Trisha Paytas was upset. I made an apology video to Trisha Paytas, all right? But recently I asked you, the viewers, what your thoughts were about it and 90% of you said, listen, she's a public figure, you're doing commentary, you can talk about it. But Here's the thing, like, <laughs> yes, I initially felt bad, but the more information that is coming out, like, when I first started making videos about Trisha Paytas, I knew absolutely nothing about this woman, all right? I was covering a lot of different mental health topics. People kept recommending me talk about Trisha, uh, Trisha Paytas videos, especially her toxic ass relationship with Jason Nash. That is all I knew about her. All right, but now, as I'm getting to know her more, especially with this Nikocado Avocado situation blowing up and so many videos coming out, you know, backing up what Nikocado was saying and how she's done this to many, many, many other people. Like, if I would have known that originally, I would have pretty much said what PewDiePie said in his video where she's not really a good person. So I'll end with this. In no way do I hate Trisha Paytas. I always try to say this. I love everybody, but I don't like everybody, all right? And in my opinion, in my opinion, Trisha Paytas needs a lot of work, and she might even need a break. Trisha Paytas has been talking a lot about therapy lately, and it's something I've been staying away from, but I could do a whole video about that, but, like I've worked in addiction treatment, I've worked with many therapists, I've worked with many people who are going to therapy because I'm not a therapist, and you can always tell people who are twisting what their therapist says. It's something that you kind of start getting a knack for. You can hear them talking about therapy and you ask yourself like, are they telling their therapist the whole truth? Does their therapist know everything 
that's going on. What did their therapist really say? Because don't get me wrong, there are some terrible therapists out there. But I'll ask you this, do you have anybody in your life who started seeing a therapist and whenever that person would talk to you, they would tell you that their therapist said that you're the problem. Most therapists will not do that unless it's some kind of like brutally abusive relationship and they want you to set up boundaries and they want you to get out of it, right? Like when I was working at the addiction treatment center, I would tell my clients constantly, constantly to beat that accountability into their heads. I'm like, don't you ever, ever go back home and tell your family that what we taught you here was, was that your family needs to change for you to stay sober because that's not how it works, all right? We all need to take personal responsibility and accountability for our actions and our mental health and the work that we're putting into it. But this pattern of behavior with Trisha Paytas shows that she does not like to take personal responsibility or accountability for anything. So whenever I see new videos coming up reminding me that she is refusing to apologize to Nick for what she did, like I could do a whole video about how she skirts around all of the main points to try to make it seem like she just felt unsafe, right? There are so many contradictions, but anyways, check out the Spill video. Spill like has a whole segment like talking about the different contradictions that Trisha Paytas said and did and everything like that in this scenario. But at the end of the day, for anybody defending Trisha Paytas, don't worry. Trisha Paytas is a big girl. She's not a victim. She can take care of herself. And like she said countless times, she has a massive support group around her to help her through these difficult times. All right, but I wish her the best. I hope therapy works out for her. And that's all I got for this video. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to support what I'm doing here, click or tap on that Patreon icon right there. All right, thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.